Hey everybody, what's good? What's going on? JB here, back with another Cyber Insight video. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about network DevOps and CI CD pipelines. Now, don't worry, if you have no idea what those are, then you're actually at the right place and I'm going to walk you through this journey that I just went on as far as developing my first network automation CI CD pipeline. I'm going to explain all the different tools that I covered. We're actually going to be looking at a blog put out by my friend Julio PDX which walks through all of this and that I used kind of as a blueprint to be able to begin my own journey down this path. So there's quite a bit to this. We're actually going to take this and break this up into a few different videos, uh, some bite sized chunks, but we're doing it, you know, keeping in mind that I want to put out something that allows you to follow along and do the same exact type of thing that I did as far as learning these tools and building out your own CI CD pipeline. So Gonna hop over into the browser and uh, start to go through the initial information, an you know, overview of what it is that we're actually trying to do. But as always, uh, appreciate you checking out the video. Make sure you smash the like button, subscribe to the channel and all that other good stuff. So let's hop over into the video. Now, uh, as always, if you have any questions, throw them in the comment section. We'll hit them up. I'll try to answer them the best I can. Uh, there definitely was a lot of lessons learned uh, through this, so uh, just going to try and do my best to share what it was that I ran into, the problems that I ran into, the things that worked for me, uh, and hopefully it'll just be a great learning experience for anybody who wants to uh, go down this path. So uh, I'm going to put links for all of the stuff that we cover here in the video description, so no worries give you uh, Julio's blog post here. He actually has, it's a six part blog. We're not actually gonna make six videos. I'm gonna try and condense this down into three, I think uh, would be the way to handle it. But uh, we'll just kind of hop in here and, and uh, see what it is that we're gonna be doing. So uh, right off the top, if you don't know what CICD is, um, it stands for Continuous Integration and Continuous Deployment. It's a software development concept and it's kind of looking at things from the perspective of kind of this continual improvement and management of software. So things are created, they're tested and eventually pushed into prod, but we're doing it in a way where we're leveraging different types of uh, tool sets and code so that it's much more automated and we are able to do things uh, a lot quicker. We're getting rid of manual processes here, trying to minimize manual processes as much as we can. So the question you might have with that is, okay, that's great. And that makes sense, uh, maybe from a software perspective, but really, you know, when it comes to network engineering, what's really the benefit to that? And Julio actually lays out uh, a very good uh, overview here, kind of like the steps that we go through as a network engineer when we go to make different changes to the environment. So normally somewhere, someone comes up with some type of request for some type of change, whether that is, you know, externally from a client or customer, or if it's something that someone within the team realizes needs to be done, normally that will end up kicking off some type of change request. That ends up normally going through a change request review process and, uh, you know, some type of ticket is normally created that details a whole bunch of different information. Us engineers normally will then go and take this information, manually take it, go and go into a test environment to test things out. Um, the problem with this ends up becoming as we walk through all these different steps is that this isn't very uniform, uh, especially depending upon if you have a team of different engineers. Some people might have some stronger skill sets in, in different areas. Some people are more thorough than other people. Uh, so it's not necessarily a, a same controlled measured approach every time you're going through these different types of change requests. So we go, we test it in the environment. If things seem to look okay in our test environment, uh, then we'll go and log into individual devices to push the change across the entire network. That's easy enough to do in a small environment, but if you actually have changes that you need to push out to 10 devices, 50 devices, 100 devices, or more than that, then that obviously is very time consuming. And then obviously, at the end of that, once we push those changes out, we have to validate that the changes worked and there aren't any other types of service interruptions. Again, this is could be a very manual process and just adds more time to uh, how long it takes to make these types of changes. And also it just, uh, you know, 
might not be uh, the same level of quality across the board. So we want to find a way to maybe automate some of these processes to make things uh, a little bit more streamlined. And that's really what we're trying to do. We're trying to eliminate errors, make things more streamlined, speed things up. So here is Julio's diagram of all of the different components that are going to be a part of our pipeline. Now, when I first read this, I looked at this and I just went, holy crap. I, I probably said something else, but not trying to get my video demonetized here. So, uh, yeah, just a lot of stuff that I was unfamiliar with. And if you reading through uh, his blog post, he mentions that he wanted to pick some tools that he maybe he wasn't necessarily familiar with. Um, but just kind of, you know, looking at this diagram right off the bat, we really, so we're going to be using GitHub. Uh, we're going to be using something called ngrok, which is going to sit between GitHub, which is out on the internet, and our infrastructure that's going to be running, you know, within our test environment or your computer or wherever you're going to be doing this. Uh, ngrok, al or ngrok allows us to get a public IP address that can be linked to the drone server, which allows GitHub to make webhook calls so it can send information back and forth. Then we have these uh, this drone server, and this is really the thing that is going to be managing uh, the work, what's actually being done. And in this case, we're actually gonna be spinning up a whole bunch of containers. So if you haven't had any experience with Docker and containers, then this is going to be uh, awesome for you. I've had a little bit of experience before, but definitely got a lot more into this. Uh, now I just know a whole bunch of uh, useful commands uh, when it comes to managing and monitoring uh, Docker containers, which is awesome. So uh, that drone server is going to be kind of that in between, between GitHub and pulling down all these different types of configurations and then pushing that stuff out to these drone runners. These drone runners are actually gonna be what's gonna be spinning up the containers, and these containers are gonna be doing uh, a whole bunch of different types of configuration actions and configuration checks uh, within our test environment. So remember, the, the whole purpose of this is that we want to make different types of configuration changes, but we also want to verify that these configuration changes aren't gonna have a negative impact across our uh, network devices when we make these changes. So we're going to be using Batfish and uh, Nornier and Napalm. Uh, so we're going to be using Python scripts, in essence, to, to use Nornier and Napalm. Uh, if you haven't had any experience with that, then this will be kind of fun uh, from that perspective. We're not necessarily going to be going into any real uh, Python lessons uh, within uh, this video series. Uh, if you do need some of that, there's a lot of other great ones. Uh, David Bomble has a great course on Python for network engineers. I definitely would recommend you go check that out. I also have a few uh, Python videos as well on the channel, so you can go take a look at that. But if you don't really know that, no worries. Uh, we're going to walk through um, some very, very basic things that you pretty much can just copy and paste. And hey, there you go. You got your first Python script. So. Uh, and then there's going to be uh, Suzy Q, which we're going to use for some post check validation. Now, um, within Julio's lab, he had four different routers that are all uh, using uh, eBGP. We're not necessarily going to be doing that in my lab. Uh, I just have a few different switches running in Cisco CML. And uh, yeah, we're just going to use those to go in and make a few different uh easy, very basic configuration changes. So the whole purpose of this for me was to actually get uh, the pipeline itself established uh, so that I understood kind of all the different components and how it all all worked together. So the configurations that we're actually doing on the switches, you know, are pretty, uh, pretty nominal, nothing, nothing too crazy. So um, as far as getting started and what we need to do here, a few different things. So Julio mentions that he's using Ubuntu. I'm actually using that as well. So we're going to get into my Ubuntu VM here just shortly. And he's using uh, four CPUs and eight gigs of RAM. I have about the same. So you should be totally solid with that. So first thing off the bat, you are going to need to get a GitHub page. If you do not have one, uh, go and sign up for one. Very, very easy and straightforward. And the other thing that you're going to need to do is create a repo. Um, a repository or repo is where we're going to be putting a lot of the code that we're going to be using uh, within this pipeline. If you haven't done that before, there's a whole bunch of uh, different resources out on the internet to find out how to do that. 
Um, you also could just do it right through GitHub and their GUI. Very, very straightforward. You can just click on the repo button, hit new, the name of whatever you want the repo to be. You can have it be public. You can add, uh, you know, some of these other files down here, the README or the, the Git Ignore license. Whatever you want to go with, it doesn't really matter at this point. You're just kind of testing things out and you can hit create the repo. Uh, for me, I actually uh, created mine using PyCharm. So I was doing all of the configs and coding on PyCharm on my desktop. And then within PyCharm, whenever you create kind of these folder structures or projects is what they call them, you actually can push them up to GitHub. Um, and so that's how I went about doing mine. So if we click into mine, the CICD, then you can see all the stuff here, all these different uh, files and directories and folders, and it is completely overwhelming. <laughs> Not gonna lie. Uh, when I saw Julio's, when I started uh, going down this, I was completely overwhelmed and I have, was like, I don't even know where to begin with this. Don't worry about that at all because you actually start off with nothing in your repo. This is going to be a very iterative process of just creating an individual file here and there, uploading it in there, um, making a few modifications here and there, and all this stuff builds on top of itself. So uh, do not feel overwhelmed by looking at this at all. Um, but once you actually go through that process, then everything in here will make complete sense. So we talked about needing to have um, GitHub. Uh, so you do need to have that. Um, we talked about ways you can access GitHub and create the repos. Um, you could also just be running Git on your Ubuntu server if you wanted to do that um, as well. So Docker, uh, as Julio says here, he was fairly new to Docker and containers as a whole. I completely second that. Um, I think the, I'm trying to remember what experience I've had with Docker. I think there was a few TriHackMe rooms uh, that covered uh, Docker images. And I think we did that. Um, so the main thing with Docker and containers is um, there's no external dependencies involved. It's pretty much just its own little environment within your server. Um, it is different than a virtual server um, because it's actually uh, leveraging the, uh, I'm trying to think how I want to word this. It's leveraging all of the different software that you have uh, from a base OS, right? So we're running this on Ubuntu. So all of the network connections and things like that, that are already there, um, it's going to be leveraging that, but you can also end up building it out with different types of images and installing different types of software just within the container. So the first thing that they have us do here is actually install Docker. Um, and these are the commands for that. It's pretty straightforward. I also recommend, as Julio does, there's this uh, DigitalOcean, the, the Docker documentation on how to install Docker. Um, it's pretty much the same stuff that Julio has uh, in his blog, but they do go a little bit more in depth into what each of the different commands do. So, um, Pretty straightforward. You're just going to be doing uh, apt update, apt install, and then you are uh, pulling down the image for Ubuntu. You're adding a repo on your uh, on your Ubuntu server so that you're able to pull patches for it. Um, yeah, I mean that's that's pretty much it. Making sure that it's uh, it'll be starting up whenever uh, you restart the box. All that type of good stuff. Now, this is actually uh, a very good uh, command. So it, this is going to be using Docker without um, having to sudo every time you do the commands. This, these commands are also covered in the how to install section here. So pretty much whatever the username is that you're going to be using, you just input that into um, into these commands here. You do that, and then you don't have to worry about using sudo or running the Docker commands. So once you have Docker actually installed, then you can see all of the different Docker images uh, that are running. You should not have any running at that point. Um, but if you did, then you could see them with a Docker PS command. So let's go hop over into my Ubuntu server real quick. Let's see. I'm just gonna bring this up so you can see it. 
Okay, let me just switch my switch my screen output here. And there we go. Okay. So if we go Docker PS, we see that I actually have a few different uh, containers running at the moment. I actually have three different containers running. I have uh, a runner, drone, and Suzy Q. These are all things related to this pipeline. But as I mentioned, you are just starting off as you're working through this, you will not have these up and running. You can also do um, Docker image. Oh, Docker images, sorry. And this will show you all of the different uh, container images that you have on your machine. Um, so that's also a good way to see what you have going on there. Again, at this point, you really should not have uh, anything installed here yet. So uh, let's see. We talked about these Docker commands. So let's move on to the next portion and dealing with uh, setting up GitHub and Grok and these drone servers. So that's going to be part two of Julio's blog. So let's talk a little bit about this pipeline and the, the servers and the drones and what they all do. So once we have Docker installed, we need something to be able to test and execute the code. And this is one of the main uh, parts of CI CD. So there's a whole bunch of different tools out there, depending upon what it is and the scope of what you're trying to do. Uh, different things serve different types of purposes. In this case, he ended up going with drone simply because it was something that was new and he wanted to mess around with it. Uh, now having done this, drone is super easy to configure, super easy to use. So I understand uh, why people would like it. Um, the drone server, it's going to interact with your um, source control. So in this case, we're using GitHub. If we didn't have GitHub, I think we could uh, interact, uh, should be able to interact with just Git if we were going to do that, I think. Uh, the drone servers and runners are going to be containers, as I mentioned. And they're the ones that are actually executing all the different types of configurations um, within the pipelines. So this could be linting, testing, and deployment of configurations. So uh, he's mentioned here, uh, one cool thing about the uh, about drone is that each runner is an isolated container environment. For example, if we wanted to run a pipeline using a Python-based app, we could pull down a Python image and run that as our execution container. Or maybe we're testing some PowerShell and need a Windows execution environment, we could pull that all down a different image as well. Um, and you can see how we do that. There's actually a YAML config that drone uses um, that's gonna step through, it's pretty much a playbook, really. It's gonna step through uh, all the different processes that we're going to uh, go through uh, as far as checking things, configuring things, and then verifying things after the fact. And with at each of those steps, that's what Julio's talking about here, you really could call different types of containers to be created depending upon the purpose of what they need to do. We're also going to be looking at how to um, create your own containers uh, because what you'll end up finding is that in some cases, if we want to make this as quick a process as we can, if you're constantly going through and spinning up a new container, depending upon the dependencies that it has, that could actually take quite a few minutes. So um, later on, uh, I don't think we're going to do it in this video, but in the next video, we'll look at how to go about um, putting together uh, a container configuration making our own container, putting that into our, our playbook, um, and then that will actually make things go quite a bit smoother. So uh, ngrok, I actually kind of talked about this before, uh, and I had the same exact thought, what the heck is that? And so since we're integrating grown, uh, drone, not grown, huh, uh, GitHub and drone, uh, GitHub needs to use a public URL when making those connections back to the our drone server. Since it's on a private IP space within our environment, then we need to use something to kind of sit in between that. Um, more than suitable for what we're doing in a test environment. Creates a secure tunnel between our node and the service. Um, the interesting thing with this is that there is a URL that we'll need, and we actually need this in a few different places when it comes to configurations. Uh, let's see. 
There is a free and paid version for NGROC. I'm just using the um, free version. Perfectly fine, ended up working out all right. So what we're gonna wanna do is create a temp directory. Doesn't have to be called temp, you can make it be whatever you want it to be. Okay, so these were the commands that I was talking about. Uh, you have, you're gonna make the directory cd to temp, wget install unzip, and then this is the command that you're gonna run for uh, getting ngrok to run on the box, and then you're gonna get an output like this. So one thing that Julio mentioned, and I didn't end up finding a way to do this either, um, you didn't see an option to run uh, ngrok detached. So that means you have to leave this running and connect uh, to the server on another session, meaning uh, you have to leave this terminal open when, when you run this. So if we actually do move back over to my VM, I'll show you what I mean with that. Let's see. I got timed out, no worries. Okay, so we have this here. This is running now. So I, I have to leave this window open since there's no way to run it detached. Now, the important thing that he mentioned was this URL here. This is a real URL. Uh, you could, if I was streaming this live right now, you could actually hit this URL and you would be connected to my drone server. Don't worry, by the time I post this, this will no longer be the URL. <laughs> so I'm not gonna be not gonna be leaving that up. So uh, we need this, we need this in a few different places. We're gonna need this uh, for our configurations uh, for the drone server. And we're gonna need it for our configurations for uh, GitHub where we're gonna be creating a OAuth app that kind of links GitHub to the drone server. So once you uh, spin this up, you run that command to get this running, you need to make sure that you copy this URL and keep it because we're going to need it. Again, though, what that does mean is that whenever, if you close this out or you restart uh, your VM, you're going to need to restart this. This is going to be a new URL and there's a few different places that you're going to need to go and update this in your configs. Again, not a big deal. It only takes a minute or two to go and push it back out. But if you do get to the point where something isn't working anymore, uh, you might want to make sure that your configs are updated with whatever the correct uh, ngrok URL is. So we have the URL. Good to go with that. So we're going to go talk about creating a GitHub OAuth application. Here we go. Okay. So uh, to do that, you're going to go log into the GitHub account that you created. You go to settings, developer settings, OAuth apps. So over here, down to settings. And then over on the left hand side, down by the bottom, should be developer settings, OAuth apps. You see that I actually already have mine created, but we're not going to go into that. Um, I'm just going to show you how you would create a new one. And so you would put in your application name. Now this is where you're gonna need those URLs. So you're gonna put the first URL here and give it whatever name you want it to. And then you can put the URL here again. However, there is a forward slash logon that you need at the end here. So you wanna make sure that you do that. And then you're gonna click register. Once you do that, uh, it's gonna pop up uh, into the actual configuration for this new OAuth application that you created and there's a few things that you need to do within that you're going to hit generate new client secret uh, that's going to be a string that you're going to need and you're going to use that in your drone configuration i'm going to show you what that drone configuration looks like here in a second and again julio notes uh if you restart the ingrok service a new url will be generated and you will have to update your oauth application with that url Something else that we're gonna to need to do here first off is create a secret RPC key. This is gonna be shared between the uh, drone server and the runner. 
super easy. You can just run this to end up creating a, a OpenSSL uh, a key here that will be able to be shared. So that's going to be a unique uh, a unique hex number. You're going to need that. Just save that, just like we saved the the URL and the uh, key from uh, GitHub. So I will take that, put that in a notes document somewhere you're gonna need it. Okay, so as far as actually installing the drone server, this is the command that you're gonna end up running. Docker pull drone, forward slash drone, and then uh, colon two. I think this just has to do with like whatever uh, the latest version is of the drone server. And this is pulling it from, uh, I think this is coming from Docker Hub, I think. Or wherever Docker actually keeps all of its images from. I think it's Docker Hub. So um, that's actually going to pull down that image. And then if you actually wanted to see if you had it, if you run that Docker images command, then you should have that there. However, if you run the Docker PS command, you aren't actually running it yet. This is where we actually get into the particular configuration that you need to be able to run uh, the drone server. So there's a few different things here. So the uh, GitHub client ID that you would just put here, um, it's going to be equal and then whatever the ID is. So you're going to be getting rid of um, all of these different brackets. Do you want to make sure that you do leave a space and then a backslash though? So that a GitHub client ID, you actually would end up finding that within the OAuth app that you just created that actually will be up towards uh, the top of that once you click into there. Then just below that would be the GitHub client secret, which uh, you should have created as well when we were walking through the process for uh, creating that OAuth app. Here is the drone RPC secret. This is the uh, value that we just created above here. You know, drop that in here. This is going to uh, also be used in the uh, runner configuration that we're going to do afterwards. Then we have the drone server host. This is actually where we're going to take that ngrok URL. Now, when you put this in here, you are not going to be putting the HTTPS colon um, forward slash or backslash backslash, right? Uh, it's just going to be the actual URL component of that. So it just should be not the HTTP, not the colon, not the forward slash, forward slash. It's just going to be the numbers here. So that dot ngrok dot IO, that's what you're going to be putting into um, this here. And so you can write this just in uh, a text file somewhere just so you can have this all out. And then once you have everything here, then you're just gonna copy and paste it to run it. Uh, the last thing that you're gonna need to have here is uh, your GitHub username. So because of the fact that you're using uh, the client secret and stuff like that, you actually won't need to be putting in a password or anything like that. That's you've already given the OAuth the permission for that, but you do need it to have your uh, GitHub username here. Okay, so once you go and you do that and you hit enter, um, then you should be able to go and run the uh, Docker PS command, and you should see that your um, drone server is actually there and running. And I'll show you again what that looks like, but let's walk through the um, drone runner configuration as well. So uh, in this case, again, we're doing a, a Docker pull command. This is all you need to do very straightforward. This is going to pull it down. Now you'll be able to see this again if you do the, the Docker uh, images command. And then here is the configuration that you need for the runner. Kind of similar to the one above. Again, you're going to need uh, the ngrok URL in here again. Remember, no HTTP, HTTPS, none of that, just the actual numbers.ngrok.io. And then the RPC secret that we ended up using up here, drone RPC secret, whatever you used in this place, you need to use down here as well. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. You can go ahead and hit run. So once you do that,
let's move over to back to my VM. And we're back in here. Then we can do the Docker PS. And you see that the drone runner and the drone here are up container ID and running. So they've been running for about an hour. Now, what that then means is that we can take that URL for uh, the ngrok and we can go and actually be able to log in and see the drone server. So if we pull up uh, browser here and we look and see, I have the URL in here and we're just on the main page. I already clicked the, the login button. Um, it doesn't make you put anything in, but uh, once you do that, you'll be brought to this dashboard. And what it should do is you should see all of these different repos that you have available to you um, from your GitHub. Now, in this case, the only one that I have selected is the CICD. Uh, you'll need to go ahead and select this first off. You won't have anything that shows a green check mark um, until you do that. So if you wanted to do any of those, you can click into it. And all you have to do is hit this activate repo button down here and then it will make it live. Now, once you get in here, there's a few different configurations that we are going to want to take a look at. So you go under settings. This should be turned off. This shouldn't be trusted um, initially. There's some other stuff that we're going to do later on in some of the other uh, pipeline videos where we're going to end up turning this on, which is why I have it turned on, but don't expect to see this um, as turned on yet. Going to make sure that is public and then you're going to want to put in whatever your um, drone config is going to be. Now, don't worry, we haven't actually made it yet, but you just want to know that uh, the configuration name that you're going to be using for uh, that drone YAML config that I think I mentioned a little bit earlier, it's kind of gonna be like our playbook. It's gonna go through all of the uh, different steps and all the different containers that we're gonna be deploying and all the different actions that it's gonna be doing. Um, that file name is what you need to put in here. And I believe if we go and look back at my I'm just gonna go take a look at my GitHub real quick. I believe, I don't need to switch back for you to see it, but I'm just gonna double check real quick that that is exactly how it's how it's spelled. So it's a dot name dot YML, or you could go dot YAML. You can go dot YAML or dot YML, both are acceptable. So we would uh, hit save the changes there. Um, something else that's worth mentioning, and we will do, be doing this later, is that under general, you have secrets. This is where you can actually put in uh, variables to use in your configs that we do later. Um, so for instance, when we have our scripts that are doing things, Maybe we actually don't want to put what the real username and password is, especially if we're putting it up on GitHub. Uh, what you can do though is set those in here and then just we're going to call the variable password or the variable user and then it will just be able to take whatever is here within uh, the drone server and implement that into uh, the scripts. So pretty cool. Um, you'll see what this actually looks like in practice uh, in the next video. So let's see, we kind of have our drone server set up. We have our runner server set up. We have GitHub set up and we have um, the ability to get into our drone server to see when we actually go to deploy configurations. And you can kind of see that some of this stuff from my testing a few weeks ago, you can kind of see what this looks like. Um, just for kicks and giggles, you can kind of see 
that there's a whole bunch of different processes here. Again, I'm just showing you this so you can see what the end product what the end product is going to look like. That's not what you need to be overly concerned with because we're going to iteratively go through each of these different steps and build on top um, of the previous one. So it won't be it won't be too confusing. But looking at this right off the bat, you're probably like, "Damn, that's a lot of different stuff." All right, let's move back over into the browser. Let's see. And see if there was anything else that we wanted to hit here. Um, let's see if Julio covers anything that we really need to hit. So we talked about seeing all the different repos, activating the repo, the name of the configuration that we're doing there. Uh, let's say our script needs to connect to different devices. Oh, he talks about the variables as well. Yep. So we can definitely do that. So um, I think that is pretty much all we're going to cover for today's video. Just wanted to get Docker installed, get you your GitHub um, account set up, get the OAuth going, get the drone and runner server uh installed up and going and uh, make sure they're all kind of able to uh, see each other and communicate with each other. Um, in the next video, we'll actually start building out our pipeline uh, and uh, the drone file. And uh, yeah, it'll be uh, be a lot of fun. I'm gonna build out the, the drone file, actually create um, our own Docker image. Remember I was talking about that will help speed things up. Um, so if you wanted to go ahead and get a Docker Hub account set up ahead of time, that actually wouldn't be that bad of a thing to do. Um, and then we'll actually start to push through um, some of spinning up these containers and starting to look at um, some different scripts. So uh, as always, I appreciate everybody dropping in, checking out the video. If you have any questions on this up to this point, throw them in the comments. I'll make sure that the links for all this stuff are in the description. Um, I hope this is cool. Hope this is useful. It was really exciting for me as I started to work through this. So I think uh, you doing the same thing should be pretty exciting as well. And I look forward to uh, hearing about people's uh, CI, CD pipeline journeys. So, all right, go, uh, go get at it. Take care of yourself and we will talk soon. All right.